Hello, welcome to Donkey Brains Vlog episode 6. My name is Courtney. If you don't already know who I am, be sure to check out Donkey Brains Vlog episode 1 for some background information. This vlog will have five topics as usual. The first thing is a month in review, so I'm going to just talk about March in general, kind of how it went for me uh, tournament-wise, poker-wise, life-wise, just, you know, just kind of an overview of the month. Topic number two is tournaments in March. So I'll talk about my biggest scores, how I ended up overall for the month, and uh, you know, just how it went, and yeah, just overall, just overall. Topic number three, things to work on. Obviously, if you've been following me since the start, I've only been playing tournaments for a few months now, and I have a lot to learn. Uh, so in this section, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just talk about what I plan on working on and things that I think are most important for my growth when it comes to tournaments just going forward. So yeah, that's what things to work on will be about. Topic number four is stream musings. So in episode five of my vlog, I talked about what I thought was the most important thing for streaming, which is consistency. It's really important to maintain a really regular schedule and be there when you say you're going to be there. Uh, this, this month, I'm going to talk about something else that I think is quite important when it comes to streaming, and that is variance in streaming. So yeah, variance in poker, variance in streaming kind of all piles up sometimes. So I will talk about that uh, in stream musings. And last but not least, I will talk about the April coming up. So what's going to happen this month? We're already in April. We're uh, already a week past, actually. And I'm just going to talk about what my plans are for the rest of the month and uh, what will happen in my stream and in my life. Okay? So yeah, let's get started. So what happened in March? Well, as you can see from my background, the one big thing that happened... Well, it was big to me. I got a new desk, finally. And <laughs> it sounds like it shouldn't be such a big deal. But it actually was a pretty big deal because I had that desk, the old desk that I used, I had that desk since I was 17 years old. I'm 30 now. That's a lot of years, right? That's a lot of years with that desk. So, uh, yeah, my old desk and I broke up. But I've got this huge new desk now, which is super cool. It's actually a standing desk, and it's way bigger than before, uh, which is why I actually had to move my entire setup. I was in a really small area before, and this desk is about 30% bigger, so I had to move my computer. And as you can see from the background, I had to move my swarm wall as well. That took forever. <laughs> All the bees are on poster boards, but still, it took a really long time to move it, which, uh, you know, that was a, a bit of an adventure. Overall, I'm really happy with the new setup. I have a lot more space. Uh, the lighting is kind of weird because I'm right beside the window, as you can see, which is kind of strange in the morning because the sun shines on my face in a really weird way. But overall, I'm really happy with it. I just have so much more space and uh, yeah. It's taken a little bit of time for my stream to get used to the new the new background. Uh, people didn't really like this worm all at first and people miss, they miss the door. But I think it's still been a good change for me overall. So yeah, I'm really happy. Yay, desk! Stream-wise, one of the interesting things that ha happened last month was that I streamed on the Poker News channel for two days of the month. That was really, really fun. Poker News put together a stream team to bring more awareness to Twitch poker and also to kind of promote their own channel on Twitch. So I'm streaming on Poker News, uh, the Poker News channel, for two days of the month. I did that last month, and I'll be doing it again this month and next month, too. Uh, the Poker News streams were really fun. The first one in particular was super, super hype. Um, actually, though, the funny thing is that I was kind of... Uh, well, okay, here. Uh, I'll actually show you a clip from my sound check. Uh, this is the exact sound check that I did before the Poker News stream, okay? So here's the clip. All right, well, uh, this is my sound check before my first poker news stream, and I'm feeling kind of nervous. I'm not really sure why, but okay, okay. I feel like I'm really going to have to meditate during my countdown, and then once I've done that, I'll be good. So yeah, so I'm going to be calm. 
So yeah, as you can see, I was a little bit nervous before the stream. I don't really know why. I guess because I thought that I was gonna get, uh, you know, somewhat of a different audience, and I, I don't know. I was just nervous for no reason. But it ended up being really fun. I even I even won tournaments on the channel. So yeah, that was uh, that was really really cool. And I think overall, uh, what Poker News is doing with the stream team is really great because it's letting more people know that Twitch exists. And uh, Twitch is really, really good for poker, in my opinion. The other exciting thing that happened last month that has nothing to do with streaming at all is our really, really huge Daily Fantasy Sports bank. If you don't know what Daily Fantasy Sports is, I recommend you head on over to stackandfade.com. That's the website that I co-founded last year with my husband. I'll leave a link down below. But uh, yeah, Daily Fantasy Sports is super fun. One day fantasy sports is basically what it is in a nutshell. And we had a really, really big score last month. We came second in a, uh, in a really big GPP on DraftKings. And it was worth $25,000, plus that day we had uh, a few other smaller scores. So in total, we won $28,000 on DraftKings that day. It was super, super amazing. Um, uh, we did post about it on Stack and Fade the day before, and then I posted the lineup review uh, later on, a few days after the bank. So I'll leave, I'll leave those links down below, and you can check it out if you want to. Overall, it was just, it was one of the biggest things that happened in my life last month, so I thought I would talk about it here briefly. And uh, yeah, it gives us a good bankroll heading into MLB for this year, so yay! Good luck us when it comes to baseball. The last thing I'll talk about in this section is just overall, uh, just how I felt last month. Actually, the second half of the month, in particular the last week, I was starting to feel pretty burnt out. Overall, I just, I mean, I have a lot on my plate. I, I am still working on stack and fade. I work on uh, DFS and then there's the stream, right? So there's just, there's just a lot. There's just a lot that I've been doing and I, I started to feel really, really tired and really just overwhelmed last month. So uh, yeah, I actually, I actually considered canceling my stream a couple times. It was kind of crazy because I, I've been I've streamed five days every week since the start of December and so I haven't really had an extended break other than that and a lot of the times on my stream days off I'm working on DFS I'm working on stack and fade so there's just been I don't know I'm, I'm really I'm doing a lot of things uh, what I did though instead of taking some days off is that I made a couple of my days shorter so uh, I've been selling action to some MTTs and I was selling action to some late turbos in the day. By cutting those out completely, I've been able to start to stop streaming a couple hours earlier on days when I don't go deep in my rig speed tournaments. So that's been really helpful and I think that's kind of, um, it's been a really good solution. So I haven't had to cancel days and yeah. I'm not planning on canceling days going forward. I'm just gonna do that. And uh, you know, some of my streams will be a little bit shorter as a result, but other days when I do go deep, I'll be streaming, you know, for six to eight hours. So I think I think overall it, it's fine. So I didn't play any spinning goes at all last month, which was so nice, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, I played tournaments and I'm happy to announce that I actually finally won a tournament. I had come second in the 109 Bounty Builder, second in the big 109, and uh, I don't know, I just, I, I, for some reason I wasn't able to close. So I finally did win one, and uh, like I said earlier, it was on the Poker News channel. I won the $22 tanky guaranteed on Poker Stars for just over $2,000, $2,018 to be exact. The highlights are on my YouTube channel, so uh, just go back to the, go to the final tables playlist and you'll be able to find it there. But here's a clip of the last hand and my reaction after I won the tournament. All right, I'll try this. For the win, guys. I finally won a tournament! <laughs> finally! Finally! I've been needled relentlessly! Relentlessly by the Twitch chat for coming in- 
for coming in second every single time that I get heads up. So I know it wasn't the one on nine bounty builder. It wasn't the big one on nine, but I was able to win. I was able to pull it out. Obviously, deuces of club. I got really unlucky there in that last hand. Ace nine against aces. That's just um, it's gross. It's really unlucky for him. But uh, lucky for me, I will take it. Winning that, winning that pot. Two thousand dollars, guys. Two thousand. I'm so excited. So excited. So yeah, as you can see, I was very, very excited and also kind of relieved. Luckily for me, I was able to cooler the board guy there in the last hand. The other really big final table that I made last month was the Big 55. I actually came third in the Big 55 for $6,588, which was super, super cool. I've always wanted to make the final table of that event. It is just such a good tournament. So yeah, I was really happy about it. Overall, I have kind of mixed feelings about the final table. I don't think I played great. I mean, I played okay. I went to the final table, I think, um, pretty low on chips, and I was able to chip up to third place in the end. So overall, I really can't complain about it. Uh, I just think that, you know, there's some spots that I could have done a little bit better. And it's really, really funny how tournaments work, right? I made three times more money at the big 55 final table than I did in the $22 10k guaranteed. But the 22 feels so much better because I was able to win it. Whereas in the big 55, I just came third. I mean, uh, like in a way, it's kind of mental game there. You just have to stop being so stupid about it. I mean, I have to stop being so stupid about it. I feel I shouldn't feel happier about a $2,000 score than I do about a $6,000 score, you know what I mean? But it's just kind of one of those things. Tournaments, you always feel disappointed if you don't win. And, I mean, winning is just so fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, those were my two big caches of last month. There's really no other notable caches, but because of, mainly because of the Big 55, I ended up, um, I ended up up a few thousand dollars after the month was over. All right, now let's talk about things that I'm planning on working on this month. Uh, something that I actually started doing last month was doing a lot more open raising instead of open jamming. So, okay, let me explain. When I was first getting into tournaments, I was pretty fishy about my mentality in, a cer in certain spots. For example, if I had a hand like King-10 suited, which you can actually see this, I think it's the big 109 final table highlights. I open jam King-10 suited for a lot of chips. I think it was close to 20 big blinds. And the reason why I did that was I thought to myself, well, King-10 suited is a good hand, but if I raise it, I can be three bet, or if I raise it and I get called, I have to go to a flop. And I thought that the pots were so big that I didn't want to risk not winning the pot. But obviously that's totally a stupid mentality because first of all, I have a background I've read that sit and goes, I know how to play post-flop. I know how to play flops, even 20 big bonds effective. So why would I not want to use that to my advantage, right? I don't know. So there's the first flaw. The second flaw is that obviously in a lot of situations, raising and getting to go to the flop is going to be more plus EV than open jamming. So basically I was sacrificing a lot of EV for what I thought were easier chips. So yeah, uh, I decided to work on that a little bit. I mean, no one likes to have to fold ace king post flop with, tw with 12 big blinds behind, but that's just the risk you gotta take, right? You gotta risk it for the biscuit, as they say. So uh, yeah, that's something I've been working on. And sometimes I do get berated by the Twitch chat for open raising instead of going all in. For example, when I have 13 big blinds and, and uh, pocket tens in early position, I will raise that a lot of the time. And sometimes I get berated by the Twitch chat for doing that because they don't like that I'm open raising instead of going all in. But that is okay. I can handle it. <laughs> I can handle the beratements. The other thing that I'll be working on this month is opening up my game. One of the most common criticisms that I get when I stream is that I play way too tight. And the truth is, I know I play way too tight. 
the thing is, when I first started playing tournaments, I wasn't so sure what to do in certain spots. I wasn't sure of ranges. And when you're not so sure about those things, it's better to play type. So that's what I've been doing. And I still have had success in tournaments, even though I play way, way, way too nitty. But I'd like to increase my, my ROI by opening up my game a little bit. So I am planning on working on that. You know, playing a few more pots in all positions. I'm way too tight in all positions. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the other thing. The main thing I'll be working on this coming month. All right, here's the stream musings. So I will talk about variants, like I said earlier, I'm gonna talk about uh, just the variance of streaming and why I think it's important to accept it. Before I get to that though, I want to talk about something that I really need to work on. And that is, I need to stop getting so defensive when the Twitch chat tells me that I'm really, really terrible at poker. And this is, this is actually something I'm better at now than I was when I first started streaming, but I still need to work on it. I need to not be tilted when I get berated by the chat. And uh, I don't know, like, I'm not really sure why I've, I've had a problem with this. I was actually talking to a friend the other day and I told him, yeah, sometimes the chat berates me. Actually, often they berate me and they tell me how bad they think I am at poker and I get annoyed by that. And he said to me, Courtney, I'm really surprised that you would even care what the chat thinks. Why do you care? Why don't you just not care about it? Why do you care what they think? And I mean, it's it's really, honestly, it's true. I And I don't really have a good answer. I don't know why I care so much. So now that's something that I have to work on. And um, I'll, one of the things that I'll think about when I do feel myself getting annoyed, I'll think about a fact, okay? One of the facts about life when it comes to poker is that not everyone's a winning player. There's obviously for some people to win, other people have to lose. And so not everyone in the Twitch chat is gonna be a winning player. And I have to remember that if I did everything that the Twitch chat wants me to do all the time, I might not be a winning player either. So that's something I'm gonna really keep in mind and I'm gonna think about that when I feel myself getting tilted. <laughs> All right, so now on to the advice of the month variants, guys. So, uh, I mean, most people reading, or sorry, reading, watching. This is a vlog, right? It's not a vlog. Okay, perfect. Now that I'm, now that I know that it's a video, uh, most people watching this uh, understand that there's variants in poker. There's variants. You're gonna lose sometimes. You're gonna win sometimes. There's ups and there's downs. There's upswings. There's downswings. And the same thing goes for streaming. This is something that I've had to learn and relearn actually a couple times. I've been streaming for about 10 months now. I started last year in the summer and uh, I've been partnered for, I think I've been partnered for nine months now. So uh, what I've had to learn this over and over and over again, there's gonna be good times and there's gonna be bad times. There's gonna be some times where you feel like you're on top of the world. Your stream is so awesome. You got so many follows, so many subs. People love you. Those are the good times of streaming. There's also going to be bad times. There's gonna be times when you feel like you have no viewers. You feel like that, you feel like you're, I don't know, going downhill, you're not growing. And I don't, people are just really salty in the chat. And the thing is, the thing about streaming poker is that when you're not winning, you get fewer views. That's just the way it is. So if you're downswinging in poker, chances are you're going to be downswinging when it comes to streaming as well. Because just the fact, the fact about poker on Twitch is that people want to watch winning, right? People would rather watch a final table than you busting out, you know, in 300th place in every tournament that you play. So that's just, uh, that's something that I've had to learn. Like I said, over and over again, a lot of the time, um, like a lot of the time when, I, when I'm doing well on streaming, I think to myself, wow, the days of me getting 40 views, those days are over, awesome. Maybe now I'll get three digit views all the time. And then a month later, I'll be back to getting like 50 views or 40 views again. And I'll be like, wait, what the heck? <laughs> like, why? happening to me you know and that's just the way it is you got to grow your stream slowly and 
maybe in a few months I'll be done with the 50, the 60 view streams and I'll be, I'll be getting 100, 200 views every stream, but that doesn't happen overnight. So I just have to remember, and that's my advice to you if you're a new streamer and you aspire to grow your stream, uh, just remember that there's variance. It will get better. As long as you work hard, you will grow your stream, but there's going to be ups and downs and you just got to deal with the downs as best you can. All right, we made it to the last topic. April coming up, what's going to happen this month? I will be streaming as usual, of course. I'm going to continue on with the current schedule. Uh, the current schedule is five days a week, one day of home games, and four days of MTTs. So that's what I'll keep doing this coming month. And uh, if, you, if you don't already watch my stream, but you somehow did stumble upon this blog, please follow me on twitch.tv slash I'll leave a link down below and I'd love to see you sometime in the future on Twitch. Twitch is, I mean, Twitch is so fun. It's so amazing. So I really look forward to seeing you there if you don't already watch my stream. I'm probably, uh, I'm probably going to start playing spins again this month too. I'm not planning on playing spins at all on stream. I'm planning on playing MTTs only, so tournaments only. But I do need to play Spinningos to maintain Supernova on Poker Stars, so I'll probably play some spins on the side. Just a few days of spins this coming month, and uh, by not streaming I'll be able to play more tables, so I'll be able to bang out those BBPs uh, quicker than I do uh, when I do stream spins because obviously I, I mean I just can't stream more than two spin and goes at once it's too hard to keep up with the chat and play the games at the same time so I will be playing spin and goes off stream I, I I might I might record them for YouTube I haven't really decided it's just it's a lot I don't know it's more tiring to talk while you play poker, and it, it might be nice to play some poker without talking, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I, I do like posting Spin and Go videos, and I know that there's people out there that like watching the videos on YouTube, so we will see. The last thing that I have to do uh, in April is decide whether I'm going to World Series. I don't know. People keep asking me whether I'm going to go to the World Series of Poker in Vegas this summer, and the the truth is, I just don't know the answer to that. I hadn't planned on it, but it might be fun, and I don't know. There's a lot of streamers that will be going to World Series as well, so it might be fun to meet some of them. I don't know. We will have to see. We'll have to see, and I do need to decide sooner than later because I do want to sell action if I end up going, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully... By the time I record Donkey Brains vlog episode 7, I will know the answer. Because, yeah, that's going to be in May. Holy crap. The World Series starts in May, so yeah, I better choose soon, right? That's the end of Donkey Brains vlog episode 6. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy the vlog, please make sure you click the thumbs up. And also, please make sure you subscribe to me here on YouTube. I really appreciate the support. Thank you so much to everyone that has already subscribed to me here. Like I said earlier, if you'd ever like to watch me play poker live, you can go to twitch.tv slash CordyB. And I did want to mention also the CordyB hangout thread that I do host on Stack and Fade. So if you go to the Stack and Fade forum, there is a twitch.tv slash CordyB hangout thread. That is the best place to go if you want to post any questions, comments, or suggestions for me about my stream or even about the YouTube channel here. I will post a link down below if you want to just click and go to the thread. And yeah, I really hope to hear from some of you there. Uh, I really like hearing feedback and even if you're just, you know, if you enjoy the channel, I would love to hear uh, that that you like what I do here. So thank you so much to everyone that already posts there. You guys are super awesome. I really, really appreciate the support. I will be back next month to record Donkey Brains Vlog episode 7. And, um, you know, between now and then I will be posting some videos. So thanks so much for watching. Take care until next time. And, yeah, maybe I'll see you on Twitch, right? Okay. Have a great day or night, whatever it is for you. Talk to you soon.